What's up guys and welcome back to another EVE Online Abyssal Guide where I break down the numbers so you don't have to. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at how I'm making 130 million isk per hour running tier 3 dark filaments. So I'm very excited for this one because this is not something that most people want to do at all. Most people want to avoid the dark filaments. As a matter of fact, the dark filaments are the ones that are run the least in tier 3 filaments. Um, and that's just because they're very freaking difficult. So like my last video, uh, on this video, I'm going to have timestamps that are going to show um, the fit and everything else. So you guys can just jump ahead in the video to wherever you, uh, whatever you want to watch. Um, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over the fit itself, um, the skills and the implants. And then after that, we're going to go over the economics, the Don't numbers, um, how it's been working out for me what I'm looking for and why why it works, why I'm making 130 million esque per hour in tier three filaments, Don't when that's a higher number than what you could even do in tier four. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the fit. So we're running the Gila, and it's a pretty expensive setup, but you'll find that it's totally worth it, just as I have. So this is a total fit, uh, all the different stats. You guys can pause the video, take a screenshot if you want. There's also gonna be a link in the description um, to the actual fit on the Abyss Tracker. Uh, but let's go through it real quick over here. So first things first, in the missiles, we have three rapid light missile launchers too, and a heavy missile launcher to blow up the cache. A uh, small tractor beam to help out with uh, the work of pulling in the, the wrecks. In the mid slots, everything is geared towards um, getting our 21 EHP simulated here, 25.5k EHP, um, as well as a flip fleet stasis webifier and a uh, large cap battery to make sure that we're stable and that we're able to slow down the opponent's ship. In the lows, we've got our faction drone damage amplifiers. So these are the scent kit because they were the cheapest for me, but you guys can buy whatever you want, whichever, whichever is cheaper for you, uh, as long as it's one of the faction ones. Otherwise, the fit won't actually work. In the rigs, we have our medium core defense field purge at two, just to increase the natural um, uh, shield regen. We've got a medium drone scope chip too, that's gonna help our drones with their optimal range. And then we have a medium capacitor control circuit too, as well. In terms of drones, we're using the Vespas 2 and the Calvin Army Navy Vespas. You can use the augmented uh, Vespas as well, but they're very expensive and there are a few rooms that will immediately target your drones the second you come into the room. And I've actually lost one of my augmented Vespas in about maybe 30 seconds, maybe even less. I wasn't looking and all of a sudden it was gone. Um, so it's an expensive thing to lose. I think it was 32 million S. Not really worth it. Um, it does boost your DPS a little bit. I think with the augmented Vespas, you could look at 830 DPS in total, uh, but it's not really worth it. You don't necessarily need it. We're clearing the rooms fast enough as it is. In the cargo, we've got a pack rat NTU. This is gonna be fairly important to pull in all the wrecks. And then we have a couple of extra drugs that combined together can give you an extra 6% shield boost in case you need it. In terms of shield boost, currently we are at 57.50, guys, 57 yeah, 57 HP per second. So additionally, on top of that, I am running a couple of implants just for a bit of extra safety. So what I've got here is the shield management for an extra 3% to my total shield and the shield operation for an extra 3% to, I believe, the boost. Um, so it's not much. Uh, it does make a bit of a difference overall, though. It does help you get a little overtime, and um, and that's that's how we like to do it. Um, these two together are about 45 mil extra in total. And now let's go over the skills. Um, so first and foremost, let me just show you guys the drone skills. Um, so you guys can take a screenshot of this, or just pause the video, take a look at what these levels are. This is what I need to uh, to reach the DPS levels for the drones. Um, in terms of shield, we're over here, we'll do the same thing. Engineering. And then specifically for the Gila, so my Galantic Cruiser level is level 5, and my, Kel my Keldari Cruiser level is level 4 currently. Um, I do believe if I took the cruiser Keldari Cruiser level to level 5, I'd probably go up by another 2k in EHP, maybe an extra 1500 EHP, which could be useful. All right, so how the hell am I making 130 million per hour? 
So first and foremost, I'm using dark prints, which are absolutely dirt cheap. Okay. So compared to, let me show you guys here. Um, yeah. So compared to electrical filaments, which are 4.6 mil or exotic filaments, which are 4 mil, I'm using a filament that is on average here, 168 mil at set. So overall, from the get-go, if you can run four or five filaments in an hour, you're already saving 15 to about 20 mil just in filament costs, which I already makes a really big difference. The other reason why we're making quite a bit more is because of the rare drops. Okay, so um, the rare drops that are sort of more frequent in their own filament type. Um, so for example, in dark filaments, you'll typically get uh, micro rub drive neuroplasmid, and afterburner neoplasmid. Okay, so these are the more common ones that drop in the dark filaments. Because there's less of them on the market, you're actually um, getting items that are worth quite a bit more right away from the get-go. Then additionally, on top of that, the raging gamma filaments have been quite the isk maker, and so have the uh, raging electrical, since everyone is going crazy on tier four electrical right now. So that's amazing for us. It's giving us quite a bit more profit. Um, on top of that, I'm running them really quickly. Um, so on average, I'm going to show you guys my number here on the disk tracker. Um, okay, so this is my fit, um, and these are all of my runs down here. So unfortunately, the abyss tracker is not tracking the time properly, nor is it tracking the average millimisc per run properly either. So what I did is I took all these numbers, and I went ahead and I put them into um, this spreadsheet here. So unfortunately my face scan is blocking the numbers on the top left here. Um, but what I did is I had one run that had an unknown run time, so I just put in my average time in it, which is 12 minutes and 14 seconds. Um, total time in the abyss for all of these runs, 318 minutes, total ISK almost 700 million, uh, average ISK per run almost 27 million, and average ISK per hour 131.7 million ISK. So this is what the numbers look like so far on 26 runs. And um, my numbers have actually been increasing. And the reason why they've been increasing is because when I started running this fit, I didn't have skills high enough yet for the heavy missiles to be able to one shot the cache and the notes. And I wasn't running a hack rat MPU. I was just running the normal one, which doesn't pull in the wrecks as fast. So what happened is I would actually clear the room and then I wouldn't be done yet blowing up the nodes and pulling everything in. Um, so it was taking me quite a bit longer at the beginning. And now as I'm getting better, as I'm learning how to build tips and tricks to go faster, um, I'm actually bringing my runs closer to about 11, 11 and a half minutes, which basically allows you to do five runs and maybe start a sixth one in the hour, which is pretty freaking awesome. Now, the beautiful thing is that this is comparable to running tier four filaments. So in tier four filaments, your average loot, I believe, is right around 40 million isk per run. And on average, it takes about 15 minutes to run them. So you can run four per hour, which means you're looking at about 160 million ISK for your um, raging runs. Let's see here, actually 37 million ISK per run. But let's round it up. Let's say you're making 160 million ISK on average per hour, but then you go in here and you actually need to spend 60 million for each of your electrical filaments, which means another 60 million goes out the window. So you're back down to 100 million in profitability. Um, if you're using the exotic, you're at 10 million. If you're using gamma, you're at 7.5. It doesn't really matter which way you cut it. If you're running gammas, you're going to be making about 130 million S per hour. If you're running exotics, about 120. And if you're running electrical, you're going to be making about 100. And this is all in tier 4, where you're exposing your ship and your investment to a lot more risk, to rooms that are a lot more difficult. And that's why I went ahead and I figured out how to make the same amount of risk in tier 3 filaments. All right, let's go ahead and undock. Now, additionally, if you guys like this type of content, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I'm going to try to bring out some okay. more abyssal guides. Okay. Uh, this is my second one. I plan on trying to do as many as I can or just guides on how to find ingenious ways in EVE to, to make a lot of ISK. Um, and if you uh, have some ideas on how I can improve this fit or how you're running tier 3 darks or how you're running tier 3s in general, what your returns have been like, uh, make sure to hit that, uh, that comment section. Let me know what you guys think of this video. 
Um, I love to, to hear more. I'm, I'm very new to this game, so I'm still learning quite a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, let's jump into some of the filaments here. So I typically only bring five filaments per go um, with a couple of, uh, of the drugs here as well, just in case. Um, and what we're going to be doing when we jump in here is we're going to be targeting down first whatever ships cause a threat to us. We're going to be putting the drones on those. Um, and we're going to start shooting the nodes if there's, uh, if there's a lot of them. If there aren't a lot of them, we're just going to start um, putting the heavy missiles on the cruisers or on the battleships as well. So let's see what we get. So automatically I approach gate. Now we've got a lot of cash here, so I'm going to go ahead and go up to bio immediately. Um, and we're going to go ahead and put the drones on the um, on the Draco Magnum immediately. All right, and I actually turned off my afternoon by mistake here. Okay, and uh, these nodes are actually fairly far, so that's going to be slightly annoying. Now what I don't like here is there's no box around the Dracovac, so I'm pretty sure he's actually trying to target my drones. Um, it might actually be a good thing to be honest. Uh, let's put the heavy missiles on the Dracovac here as well. I'm just going to try to power it down and I'll go ahead and uh, let's see what's happening here. Two of the targets. So something else I'm going to do here real quick is I'm actually just going to target the cache and it just blew up. Blow this one up. I'm actually going to bring this one in with the small tractor beam. And the reason why um, is because I want my MTU to focus this node here. I want my MTU to go and grab that one. So let's retarget the drones here and let's use the uh, stasis web fire to slow down that one. I'm actually going to approach that cache. I'm thinking it could be the automata suppressor down here that's actually um, destroying my missiles before they get there. Let's just keep trying to shoot it down. Alright, so I'm just making sure that my drones are targeting the most dangerous ships first. There we go. It's kind of all over the place this morning. All right. So this is going to be a classic case of I've cleared the room before I've cleared the nodes. Um, just because uh, I was a little bit over the place there, as you guys uh, probably noticed when I started this room. I have 54 kilometer uh, or 55 kilometer missile range on my heavy missile launchers, so that's what I'm using to uh, to determine when I turn around and I start approaching the different caches and stuff like that. Um, Ideally, I could research the skills to kind of try to bring that up a little bit. It would be ideal if I could bring it up to 60 kilometers. It would make things a little bit faster to clear the, the nodes as well, for sure. All right, so I've cleared everything on this side, so I'm just going to go ahead and a module um, has run out of charging. the MTU again. There you go, room cleared. And now we wait.
All right, so 7.1 mil in the first room. So never forget to scoop back up your, your mobile tractor unit because that is a pretty hefty loss if you forget that in the room. Also, as you guys noticed, um, my first vest pop here actually took some, some armor damage earlier. I wasn't paying attention. I think the Draken I can initial land three shots on it. Um, so you do want to be aware of that. Okay, this is a very, very easy room. A lot of nodes again, so I'll target the nodes first. These are actually potentially going out of range fairly quickly here. And now let's throw out the drones. And we'll actually target the Relievos first. Um, they do a little bit more damage than the... Um, I believe they do a bit more damage than the Kihis. So let's just target those guys down. Also, these guys uh, are really good at uh, remote armor repairing. So that's part of the reason as well why... Uh, oh, I meant how to play this properly. How fast can I do this? All right, perfect. What I was trying to do is I was trying to bring in this cache um, before my NTU could target it, because otherwise I can't uh, I can't use a small tractor beam on it if my NTU is targeting it. All right, let's blow up the last one here. And I'll just put my heavy missiles on the Kiki for a few rounds. Um, the Kiki is kind of a small target, I'm only doing 75 damage per missile, even though I could do 310 total. It's a bit unfortunate, but it's the reality of uh, using three missile launchers in the Abyss. All right, so we actually blew up a couple of the nodes over here that don't have anything in them. So let's just go ahead and open up this NTU, see what we got, 2.6, a little unfortunate. But that is how the numbers fall sometime. Another very easy room, a um, couple of Vim Max, a few, few caches here. So this one down here, okay, I'll, I should be able to target all of these. Perfect. Let's pull this up. The missiles, I'm actually, uh, damn, I'm actually reloading my light missiles here. That would have made a decent difference on the, uh, on the Vimac. Um, now, what's happening here? I guess some of them are trying to target my drones. And you see, my Vespas are missing quite a bit. Um, that's because the Ven Max are not targeting me. They're not orbiting close enough for me to use the, the stasis for the fire, which is a little unfortunate, but that's the reality. There we go. Head down. Let's pick up this one. Um, what I want to do here is actually want to bring this in before I drop the NTU. And um, I've got one cache left to blow up. Okay, so that should work out pretty well. No, I should scoop up. All right, so as you guys can see, um, what I've got selected down here is my actual loot. So this was a $20 million, uh, 20 million desk run. Um, and it took me, I wasn't looking at the timer, but I think it took me roughly 11 minutes um, to complete this run. And this is pretty standard. Um, it took me a little bit longer than I would have wanted to. I was actually a little bit all over the place, as you guys might have noticed. It's my first run this morning. Um, and there's quite a bit more to do in the dark filament, so it's a little bit harder to explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it. There's a lot of targeting, there's a lot of looking at are you getting um, 
are, are you getting sense with that move and stuff like that? Is it is that stopping you from, from getting the range on the missiles? That's stopping you from getting the range on the targeting. Um, but overall, what you guys want to focus on is making sure that you target ships that can kill you, which are the Ven Max, um, the battleships and stuff like that, and putting your drones on those immediately. The beautiful thing about the dark filaments is that because you're getting um, a decreased turret range, uh, battleships such as the Charybdis Tyrannos, so Karen, can't actually hit you uh, most of the time, which is a beautiful thing. Um, I was always struggling quite a bit with Karen. Um, but other than that, most of the Tragaladian um, battleships or the Leashax, battle cruisers or the cruisers, you want to target those guys first, put your drones on them, um, and then the Kikis are your next uh, priority after that. And then you want to be aware of all where the, where all the nodes are on the on the field, and this is important because you might have to um, hold back a little bit at first to maybe target some drones that are not some drones, but target some nodes that are right around the spawn point, and then move towards the gate. It could also mean that you just have to go as fast as you can to the gate first to drop the MTU, and then branch off in dire different directions to get access to targeting the nodes and blowing them up. And um, with a little bit of practice, you guys will find the, the way that, that best suits your playstyle, uh, and you'll be able to do this fairly quickly. So overall, is it worth it to take a 1.3 billion isk ship into tier three filaments when you could probably take something that's only worth 500 million? Um, in my opinion, it, the answer is yes, for sure. Uh, the safety is there, so you're over tanked and you're over DPS. So it's never a question of can I finish the filament in time or am I going to die to these guys. Um, it's always more a question of how fast can I do this? Can I do this in 11 minutes or can I do it a little bit better maybe in 10 minutes? Um, and that's how you make a lot of ISK, just farming these filaments very, very easily. Um, the filaments are incredibly cheap, which is amazing. Obviously, if this video gets really popular and a bunch of guests start doing it, um, that might change a little bit. The filaments might go up a little bit. But I still doubt, um, I, I doubt it. I doubt that there's a lot of people that would be willing to do this to the extent that I'm doing it. Um, simply because it's it's a lot more active. Uh, it's 100% a very active bit, especially when you start adding the web in there as well. Um, and then we are uh, getting all the nodes. And that's how you're able to get the numbers that I'm getting. So you guys see how, how you want to use this. You know, have some fun. Um, if you like this type of content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button. I'll try to release some more videos. Get in the comments. Let me know what you thought of this one. Um, I had a lot of fun in, on the test server trying to figure out how to make the drones work in a dark filament just because of the optimal range and how slow the medium drones are. Um, so I very much enjoyed doing this video. And uh, yeah, I'll try and release some more over the next two or three weeks. Hopefully I'll find something that uh, not a lot of do people are doing in the abyss. And I'll be able to fill it and I'll figure it out and I'll make it happen for you guys. Cheers. Bye. Safe.